So welcome to the second session, and uh, I'm Vishal Subana. Glad to be with you uh, this afternoon. And uh, I know that my class won't be easy because just after lunch, most people uh, tend to feel sleepy. And I normally I don't like uh, just giving a speech and talking. I like very much uh, interaction. So I will be asking you questions, and I hope that it's going to keep you awake. And at the same time, you'll be able to understand that everything that you Okay, so uh, before we get into the subject, one thing I would like to ask. So we've got five students from our uh, medical uh, studying into medical, and very soon you will be medical practitioner in Mauritius. So how do you feel about uh, cyber security? Is it something of concern to you? What do you believe about uh, it's for the other guys who do IT and others? Or is it maybe just people may hack my phone and that's what that's in serious. How do you feel? In fact, I'm a business community uh, practitioner and I'm an expert in computer engineering. We are uh, uh, being uh, certified in the business community in security of UK. And also, I'm a senior lead implementer from the PCB, PCB, which is an uh, organization in uh, the certification body in uh, Canada. And uh, so, I'm uh, certified to implement the ISO 22301, which is the uh, ISO standard for business continuity. Okay? And uh, uh, so, to be able to reach over the gap, one thing which is very important is to be able to grab a lot of experience from different uh, industries and to be able to give a service to, to other uh, industries. And uh, in one of my previous uh, work I've been doing, I was working in a company where I had uh, uh, one of my colleagues who was based in South Africa and uh, he was working for Dimension Data. Maybe some of you have heard about Dimension Data, and, uh, which is a very big item. And his son is a professional, uh, what is it? professional gamer. He's a professional gamer, and uh, he was uh, that my friend had was hacked, and even they reached up to the servers of that machine data. And when the forensic went into deep to find out how they've been able to get into, 
it was through his son who was a professional leader. So using his mobile phone, to get into his Wi-Fi at home, get into his that uh, computer, and from there they install uh, some uh, background apps. So when he connected to uh, his uh, laptop office, that went directly to the server and was able to happen. So maybe tomorrow, as a clinical practitioner, we've got kids, but kids is just playing with uh, a phone in their house. And through this, they'll be able to get into the medical report of the patient. So we will. Not to make you more. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this is the thing that's happening. Okay, so let's get deep into the subject. Uh, when we talk about building resilience, it is about uh, building uh, its strengths against uh, disruption. Okay, so in an organization, you can have disruption uh, occur from a different uh, source. It could be like uh, uh, It could be like software failures, cyber attacks, which can uh, uh, cause disruption in, in an organization. So, in fact, I prepared my presentation for more CTOs and uh, the good guys, and most of them are not here. But I'm going, I'm, I'm going to try to make it more into your appetite, so you'll be able to more understand it more. So, in a company, you, you can have a disruption caused by software failures, by uh, power outages, Okay, who can give me another type of example like this? Causing disruption. Yeah, yeah national calamity. You have other failures. It could be fire. It could be in, in, uh, inclement weather. Hacking. Hacking. Accident. Accident on the road causing road blocking if people are not able to come to work. Could be uh, terrorism, could be like bomb, and we were just talking a few minutes before. Bomb, that all depends. In some countries, if you have bomb, that's okay. That's okay. That's why it happens. And in other countries, if you have a bomb, uh, that's very dangerous. It's strike action. <laughs> Protest riots. We can have like uh, product recalls. Could be like a uh, supply disruption, and also could be like. Pandemic. Pandemic is the one, uh, the last one that we added on the list here, because people are not talking about pandemic says it's, uh, it's just happening. Okay? And uh, just like you just said, uh, uh, natural calamities, uh, we were also talking uh, a few minutes before, like flooding. Flooding is normally a uh, disruption, but it depends where. So if you talk about some guys who are doing Australia, and saying uh, you got flooding, you say, yeah, we got some flooding, don't no worry. It's something uh, quite simple for them. Compared with Mauritius, we talk about flooding, so taking into account what I'm flooding on the uh, 17th March 2013, everybody is scared about it, they don't want to talk about it anymore. Yeah. Okay. So, when we talk about business continuity, so the first definition is, uh, Business continuity is about a holistic management process that identifies potential threats to an organization and the impact to business operations those threats, if realized, might cause, and which provide a framework for building organizational resilience with the capac capability <coughs> of an effective response that safeguards the interests of its key stakeholders, recognition, brand, and value creating activities. So, when we talk about the RD22301, when we talk about business continuity, there's a few words that strikes, like you've got threats and impact. This is important for us. So when we talk about threat and impact, we do some analysis, which is called a business impact analysis, or you've got also the threat assessment. Okay? And uh, one more word which is important is that organizational resilience. This is about the design. To build a resilient uh, organization, you have to design solutions. Okay. So even for you, when we were talking about cyber attacks, even for your home, for the cyber attacks, what are you going to put in to get resilient to it? Okay, so for people not to uh, enter your network and get into your documents, what are, the, what are you going to put as design 
to protect that firewalls and those things. Okay? And now we focus also on effective response. And this is what we need to implement. What is an effective response? So why do we need a business continuity? So we need to put our, our normal operation, operating level, and then an incident occurs. Uh, before going into an incident occur, it's good for you to know about the different level. You've got threats. Threats are something might happen. Okay, something might happen. People might steal your, your phone or hack your phone. And then you've got incident. Incident that the incident did happen. For example, let's say uh, there's fire in a building. It's a threat. Then the incident occurs. Now when the incident occurs, the fire gets into the building, how ex uh, what is the extent of, of the fire? Is it just small paper burning into the building? Or is it the whole room that catches fire? So this is going to trigger the crisis. Okay? And when the crisis occurs, so then the business is to trigger. You may have an incident, that is of no importance. And we have an incident which goes up to crisis. Okay, so when we have uh, an incident and you don't know what the impact is going to be, you have an unknown impact. You don't know the, the impact. So this is uh, to be able to get back to the normal operating level. So you don't know the impact. So you have an unplanned and unknown you don't know when it's going to get back to normal. Like, for example, we had the COVID last time. Nobody knows when we were going to, to get back to normal. So it was like, let's put a, a lockdown for 30 days and we're going to see into it. And then before the 30 days happen, we say, okay, we are going for another 15 days and try to see how it works. But we did not know when that was going to happen. So what happened in fact, when we have an incident, we have known incident, and you have a known incident. Okay, for example, the, the COVID was something that we did not know how to tackle it, what to do about it. But for example, if we say that there's fire in the building, so we already know what we can do in case we have fire, and how to build the organization resilient, so we can uh, plan already and safeguard the company, the company or even your home. Okay, for example, if you know that uh, we just learned about it, don't give you your Wi-Fi password to everybody. So one of the, uh, you know that giving the password to anybody can cause cyber attack into your house. So the, the, uh, the measures that you're going to put in, that you're going to design, say, okay, nobody is going to give our password now to uh, people that stay in the same place. Okay, this is for example one thing that you can do. And when you have, uh, for non-acceptable impact, so you can, you can already plan an acceptable recovery time. Okay, for example, uh, you, 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 you've done a threat assessment and you see that, uh, for example, we may get uh, disruption caused by fire. And if we get fire in the building here, so we can, within two weeks, get uh, another office somewhere else where we can, uh, we can continue to work. Okay, but for example, uh, uh, the pandemic, we did not know when that's going to, what to do about it. So we could not know exactly when we're going to get back. So when you know what, when you get back, you have a known accept, acceptable impact. Okay? Uh, yeah. So, how business continuity started? It started first with disaster recovery. Techno technology system and network infrastructure. So when we talk about business continuity, people say to deal about business continuity. And where it's all started, so people, or companies, uh, years back, they had only an operating system working. For example, some companies had only one computer, and everything was it, payroll and everything was it. And if that computer crash, they have to build again on another computer and start again. And then they say, okay, we need to have backup. This is the first stage, we have that backup. So everything that we were doing, we had also a backup. And when the system failed here, 
we could pick up from the packet and re recover. That was the business recovery. And uh, we started with uh, disaster recovery, where it was more about technology system and network infrastructure. And then it goes to become business continuity. When we talk about business continuity, now we talk also about premises, work area, infrastructure. We talk also about our people, that skills that we need to be able to continue working. We talk about other resources, and also about supply chain, supply, uh, supplies and suppliers. Okay. For example, uh, we had, for example, uh, work, uh, it was uh, during the pandemic, we had a lot of doctors that was affected. Okay. And we were needing more doctors to be able to take care of people who was getting affected by the COVID. And we had to look into retired uh, doctors to get back to work, to be able to work. Okay, so that's all about business continuity. So it's now going from only uh, disaster recovery. Now it also includes premises, for example, your building has fire. It's mostly about IT. Maybe you need just to have an office somewhere else where you, you just need to take paper and pen and keep on working. Okay, we have also working area infrastructure. And we have, uh, uh, actually, Mauritius is good to, for you to know. We do have some recovery center where you can book seats. For example, uh, we call it hot seats, we call it warm seats, and cold seats. Hot seats is, for example, uh, we have one other recovery center in Phoenix where you can book, for example, 10 seats. In case you have a, a disruption in your company, you can go right there and you've got dedicated desk where you can start working immediately. And you have one where it is some shared seat where in case uh, uh, it's on a first come, first serve basis. So when you go there, then they're going to, if there's available seats, they're going to put in your system on it, you can start working. And you have four seats where, for example, uh, uh, when you have uh, an emergency, then you're going to take a building, put some uh, office desk or workstation, and go and work with it. Okay, so all these came into, and you have, for example, the skills of uh, people, just like I just said before the COVID, we were needing uh, doctors, so we took the retired uh, doctors and helped them to come back into hospital to keep on working. And we have also uh, other resources. You have, like, for example, your supply chain. You have uh, somebody who was giving you, uh, let's take, for example, for, for medical masks that we were using for the COVID-19. So, the hospital work is uh, already buying a medical mask, like, which was used for some specific purpose. And then when the COVID-19 came in, so we had the necessity to look into uh, N95 masks that was used at that time, and we had to look into new suppliers. Okay, and all this coming to. And then uh, getting more in the same step of business community, we have what came in was a crisis management. Crisis management, we talk, into about, we talk about the brand image and general well-being. Well -being. So for example, let's talk about, uh, we, uh, we take for, for example a, a hospital. Uh, we have a hospital uh, which captures fire, and it's a private one. If it's a government, people won't care about it, but if it is a private one, okay, one of the private hospitals in uh, it's, uh, it's on WhatsApp, it's on uh, Facebook, and everywhere people say, there have been fire over there. So is the next people who need to go to hospital, is also going, on that hospital, or is going to look for other one? What's going to do? Look for another one, because they just caught fire over there, maybe some uh, instrument or steel damage. Uh, if I have to stay in a hospital, I won't get into a building that's still smelling fire. So we have to look into, uh, what we need to, to show off to the public. So whenever, for example, there's a fire in a building, uh, the press is one of the, the first person that's going to, to get there and try to have, uh, to know what happened. So when, when we talk about the press, so the, the first news is, for example, uh, who's going to announce it first? Is it radio first? Is it radio one who's going to say first? There's fire in the next building and we have to be able to talk to somebody. Now, there's your company allow anybody to talk to the press. Can you do that? Anybody can talk to the press. No. Should be specific person. Train, what to say. 
we had the one case of DPP trigger uh, where one side code failed. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have a good connection to it. And uh, uh, so the CEO was uh, on vacation. And uh, so they let him know that there was failure in, uh, in one side. And uh, that uh, seems that was needing to be done at the top. And that guy, uh, he was the one who needed to talk to the press. And as he was in, in vacation, and he was in a place where there was no connectivity, and they had to uh, make sure that he got the news and to get back to be able to, be, to talk to the press. And that guy came back and talked to the press only two days after the incident. That was the shortest time he could come. And he gave a very good speech, very planned speech. He apologized to for the environment, for all the since the damage is closed and everything, but that guy got fired. It was, it was too late. That same message should have gone within 13 minutes from the incident. Okay? So this, all these are about crisis management. Okay? So business continuity, there's a stop here. We've got now what we call business continuity management. Business continuity management, so it's going to take into account your disaster recovery, your business continuity, your crisis management, and it's going on to ongoing business resilience with a focus on constant improvement. So this is what we call now business continuity management. And now there's one more step that is going. It's about what we call operational resilience. So I'll come to operational resilience later on. So uh, let me show you how it is. So we have some statistics that say that companies that experience a major retailers without having a plan in place, 43% never reopen, 51% close within two years, and 6% survive in the long term. Only 6% survive in the long term. Okay, and most of them are going to crash. So if you're working in a company and there's no business continuity plan, You're not in a safe place. Okay? And for pro professional, uh, those here that's going to, to, to get into the marketplace very soon, make sure that when you go over there, make sure that there's a business continuity plan. Okay? So we all know about the World Trade, World Trade Center. So the World Trade Center, after the 1995 93 bombing, 150 of 300, 350 business failed. That approximately 42% of the companies that was in the World Trade Center failed. Okay? And after the 9-11, the majority of financial firms were able to recover. Why they were able to recover? Because we already had some laws that say that financial institutions, they should have a business continuity plan. So the fact that they had business continuity plan, they were able to survive. And they would have crashed. And imagine if MCB, SBM, crashed. Happen to the economy. Okay? So, despite the copious news of everything from cyber attacks to volcanic corruption, wrecking havoc on business, top management still is, is still notorious, difficult to motivate to invest in business continuity. Okay, we were just having some chat uh, early in the morning with Shiva, and uh, so she was telling me at uh, the university. Don't even want to think about investment. Opportunity. And uh, so in Mauritius, there's no laws that enforce that you need to have a business continuity plan. So even for uh, for the banking sector, the insurance, any financial sector in Mauritius, it's only a recommendation. It's a recommend that you need to have uh, a business continuity plan. And if you don't have a business continuity plan, in your annual report, you have to justify why you don't have it. Yeah. I think what, what it's a 
So when we conduct a business impact analysis, this, this is something very important. When we conduct a business impact analysis, we are going to look into what are the different threats that can affect the company. So for example, in Mauritius, uh, three, four years back, uh, terrorism was not in the list of threats for Mauritius. But now it is in the list of threats that may happen. May, may happen. And one of the greatest uh, impact for Mauritius is strike. Because the law concerning employment has weakened, and at any time there may be strike uh, in, in company, and since now the higher uh, has has grown higher in Mauritius about uh, about threats. And now when you when you have a list of threats, you will have to conduct a business impact analysis. So what is a business impact analysis? This is where you are looking into all the process that you have to be able to uh, to offer the service to your customer. So when you're going to do your business impact analysis, you have to see into what information is required for, the, for that person to perform his duty. Okay, you have a chain, A, B, C, D. So uh, B need to have information from A to B to C. Okay, so the information that he need from A, for uh, how long can he wait to get that information to be able to process it? And now see how long he can wait to get that, the, the information from me to continue working. And all this is going to, to draw a chain, which is going to say when the company, uh, the final customer, how long he can wait to get uh, the document process. Let's say, for example, uh, an insurance company. This is one of the most easiest ones. An insurance company. When an incident happened to a customer, so he needs to go through what we call the first notification of loss, which is very often it is like call center. So you have an incident, an, an, a car accident, you need to inform the insurance for my phone call. So you call the first notification of loss to tell them, okay, I have an, an accident and my car broke down. Okay, from the time that person this car broke down till he gets somebody to come with another car and replace my car. To, to move uh, the broken car. So this is where we, we calculate the criticality. Okay? If there's nobody to pick the phone, for how long can nobody pick the phone? Is it five minutes? Is it 30 minutes? If we go, for example, into uh, some parts of Africa, maybe three days. Okay? Not everywhere. You go to the bush, it may take three days, and this is normal for them. But for example, if you are stuck in the track, you're on the, uh, on the fast lane, this is something that happened to me. On the fast lane, uh, on the motorway that was the uh, at the peak time, how long should they take to move your car? Can they take three hours, four hours? This should be done within 15 minutes. You need to move that car. So they need to pick up the phone and ensure that they've been able to send the training services to move that phone immediately. So this is how we measure the critical. So now when uh, we have the impact, we have the threats, companies need now to decide what, is the, uh, what are the different risks that they have and what they're going to do with that risk. So some risks, they're going to say, okay, we're going to accept it. If I take up a case, something that happened some years back. So, you know, now all your credit cards, your bank cards, you've got microchips on it. Okay? At some time, uh, time some more time, some point in time, the SBI was the first to introduce a chip card. Okay? When it is, we introduce a chip card, so the bank of Russia say uh, on, on, the, on the general meeting, he said, okay, every bank now need to have a chip card. And uh, so this is, for example, 
if you take a small bank with uh, hundreds of, of customers, it is something very easy to do, 100 cards. But when you take, for example, for NCD, it's got maybe 600 customers, 600,000 customers, that's a different street. You don't just replace it with one, one week, one month. So Barclays Bank, they decided not to change the card and to keep the old card. And then they ask that question. What's the penalty for not replacing the card with it? And it was something like 100,000 rupees that you need to pay as fine for every month that you're not replacing that card. And then Bob plays a sit down, a calculator. What is the cost for changing that card in the And they waited for, I think, like two years before changing the card. Because it was two years, that's 2.4 million. And uh, changing the card was like seven, uh, 7 million. So it's a good way. OK? So you need to know what are the risks you accept, and what are the risks that you can also transfer? Okay, what, what you can transfer? For example, you, you see that you, you may have cyber attack. So what can you do about this cyber attack? We don't have the expertise. We, we won't be able to, to, uh, to recruit somebody to look after it, because taking some professional to do it is going to cost us that much. So we are going to outsource. So you, when, when you're outsourcing now this part, you're transferring the risk to the other part. Okay? So this is how it works. Yes, please. Based on what he said, uh, how far out is this? So outsourcing, in fact, uh, you're transferring the risk to the other party. So you have to make sure that you've got the right contracts with your, the, the right SLA, as you say, with your suppliers. Yeah. And this is going to get you the proper SLA. SLA. Yeah, the proper SLAs should be there. Yeah. But for example, I, let's take example. If you have a cyber attack, you can use that cyber attack. You can now contact me if you want to know any other question. I think that to answer. You can you can outsource any part and you need to have the right SLAs to be able to ensure it. But you know, uh, I will take two banks. The MCD and the standard of the So when we talk about uh, the number of customers for MCD, and the standard of the bank. This is what to for to, to be able to compare. But both of them are making the same uh, profit per year. And the MCB is doing everything by themselves. And the standard of the bank, they've got like 5% uh, of work to do them, like 5% of the work they are outsourced. Even when you call there, the, the person uh, sitting at the, at the researcher is outsourced. No, the person sitting on the reception area. At the reception area, is somebody outsourced. The payroll. Mention anything. It's outsourced. Who knows? But then I think in that case, the security is at risk. And it's also one of those outside clients. No, but uh, then you have to, to just to need to receive the right asset. Yeah. Yeah. And receive this in the asset. Yes. Yeah. 
and uh, it can be one side or two side, but it's hot, so uh, the equation is the same. You got here, over there, and over there. And if someone put the run somewhere here, so two other side also can get the same. When you are saying for more expensive, you have to be more cheap. Yes. Yes. You are saying so for this cloud, you have to. Yeah. Yes, specifically, I want to think about the. So they are going to give you the guarantees that the information is going to be stored only in Mauritius. Like uh, I know uh, before there was a lot of it was going to be Mauritius, which is not working now. It's not being built by Mauritius. And I hope they're still working on the same model. So they have one data center in Phoenix, and they have a backup in Portis. So they, they could offer you like a cloud service where your information is going on a specific server, so you have a private cloud, or it goes also on the public cloud where you have, but it's a public cloud using Mauritius. So they do have uh, some of these type of uh, service. Aranalak also have, uh, yeah, Aranalak also have the same uh, situation. They were having a primary server in Portis or in MT Data Center in Arsenal. And uh, only can have the other way around. Yeah. And I know some banks which had their data uh, the primary data was in the data center, the backup was in the premises, and in uh, another data center. I know the banks, but I, won't, I, I, I can't tell you the details. So, privacy. Yeah. So, actually, so I know private cloud yeah. is like a, you have it in Mauritius, as a server where the cloud data is stored. You say cloud is virtually your PE software. No. Okay, so this year is about increasing an organization business maintenance and other things are very important in the following areas. So we talk about the supply chain, we talk about the IT inputs, so started with the IT implementation, then we have also the supply chain, we have sites and facilities, also about the finance, the people, the reputation, and the customers. So when we talk about IT incomes, which come into what we we do a bit here, the various of society, uh, it's good for you to know that you can have uh, services uh, from different suppliers and merchants. You have like Intel, you have like Merchants Telecom. But you can have a private from from the different branches. Uh, one uh, being uh, so a, a private link where nobody gets into access into those uh, uh, those link. And you have also uh, other things you have, like uh, uh, using internet on one side and internet on the other side, and using what we call VPN, and then you create a channel where those two uh, sites can talk. But this is going to cost you much more compared to have an internet between in those sites. But you do have this already also. My friends here maybe can think about it. Interlink like what? You put, uh, so, and tell her, uh, uh, you have like uh, most of them have the uh, SHDSL at some time, okay. then now they, they replan it in something else. And Intel also had something that they were calling Intel today. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes. Yes, you have companies like uh, I know uh, Atlas Communication which were providing new links where they're going to set up your own equipment that's going to, to give you those links. And I know the University of Warshaw, they do have uh, one link from, uh, so they've got some classes that are done now in the whole in Eden, and compared to the other side which sees in the in Magic, so they have some link to be able to talk to those sites. Yeah, that was set up years back when I was still I don't want to show that you Yeah. Because I think you don't use uh, the Google. Ah, they don't use it? Is it because they're private files? No. If you have an internet connection like this, yeah. you just open the VPN to your firewall. Yeah. So any connection that you have directly at all, you just got the VPN is going to connect directly to the office, yeah. give you access directly to the file to the office. You won't need to have like before you have to have a private link for everyone to connect. 
So let me uh, move on. I'm going to do a little bit for some of this because, uh, okay. So what this here is, it's the answer to the question, what if? And you can easily spell the difference between the continued operation or permanent shutdown of the organization should it last year. Okay? And uh, it is also a framework to understand how value is created and maintained within an organization. At the same time, establishing dependencies or all and vulnerabilities inherent in the delivery of that value. Okay. And this is some, yeah, the inclusive of an organization is based to absorb, respond, and recover from the structure. Okay. And uh, business continuity is not about tick in the box of exercise. Okay. Very often when you ask a company, do you have business continuity plan? Yes, we do have. Is it effective? Effective. Uh, uh, some? Yeah? Isn't it very expensive for such an organization to have a business continuity plan in place? Yeah. This is a very interesting question. Is it expensive to maintain a business continuity plan? Somebody knows the answer here? It depends if you are doing it internally and when you are doing it back up. Yeah. Then you are doing it That, for example, the building where you are, you've got uh, the, let, let's say the flooring, which is uh, of a material that can easily catch fire. Okay. So what you're going to do, having a business continuity plan, is say, okay, we have to remove that flooring and put something which is uh, fireproof. 
But if you don't have a business community fund, you have not reviewed, you have not uh, managed, you won't pay attention to this. Just like they have Yes. Yes. The cost of the business continuity management system is in fact what it would cost if you did not have it. Some companies, unfortunately, the first exercise we did one was when a disaster occurred. That was the first test. So you need to continuously keep on doing your exercise and improve it. Else, you will very soon do that. Yeah, it's just like it's exactly the case of a fire. Yeah. The fire is just, you know, take out two, two dollar from the system and make sure you can Yeah. So if you knew about uh, your actual uh, uh, server room is in a vulnerable uh, location, so what you do, maybe uh, you already have a backup in a more resilient place. Let's say for example in the data center, you go and visit, you can see what other infrastructures you put over there. You know that your company won't be able to put something similar, but okay, we're going to have our backup over there. Or some companies who came to visit an entire data center, we have experience I'm telling because I was working for them, they came to visit and say, okay, we want to have your, our backup here. I say, okay, yes, please come and visit. And they say, okay, you've got all this here. Okay, we're not putting our backup uh, on your side. Oh, you miss one question. You say, no, 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 we're putting our primary over there. Our primary should be in a better place. So they move the primary server to enter and they put the backup on the side. Most of you. So, why do you need business continuity funds? So, in the board room, business continuity is a key contributor to effective corporate governance. We're talking about governance. So it is a firm commission and does not require risk management and allows stakeholders to ask certain questions about as a company's business operating model, key value creating products and services, key dependencies, critical assets and process, how the company will respond to a loss or a threat to any of these, what the main threats are today on the horizon, and evidence that the continuity plan will work in practice. So evidence that the continuity plan will work in practice is your exercise. Okay, when you practice your exercise, then you will know if this is a, a good plan or it's just a tick in the box. Okay? So why do you need business continuity management system? So what happens if your company goes down for nearly a year? You're offline for nearly a year. Are you able to survive? You can't service your customers, you start calling your competitors. What do you do? Okay, if you take, for example, the case for a telecommunication company, as per TI, TIA 942, you, your, you should be able to recover within four hours. If within four hours, if Entel is down for within four hours, you're not able to recover within those four hours, it's down for Okay, and uh, MC survived once. It was in 2013. Yeah. It was more than, 20, uh, more than four hours that even they were able to survive. But normally, after the TI-942, which is a standard set by uh, three commission companies, uh, international, and uh, they say that normally a, a service provider cannot be down for more than four hours. You should ensure yeah. that this is, this is done. They have a percentage to maybe they cannot yeah. go beyond that because I think when I took you, yeah. they have that limitations to four hours. When we're talking about resiliency, you have your primary side here and you have the backup of the other side. So you are going to work what you call a load balance. So half of your load is going to run here and half of your load is processing on the other side of the side. But you must make sure that the law that you have on, on one side does not exceed 50% of the production capacity. That means, for example, if the server on the primary side, uh, it's a capacity of 100, you should not work more than 40, uh, I would say 45. So 
Okay, that means in case the secondary side is down, you take over the load over here, and you close that with 90 percent, and you're still able to work. And that was what happened for Moshe Telecom. Unfortunately, uh, the backup, uh, the primary side was down, and the backup was not able to take over the load. But for this kind of example, where you have a crashing malicious telecom or telecom station on accident, the problem is the message won't be reached to us because yeah. the telecommunication itself is down. I remember yeah. that happened because there was this burst which fell, I don't know, it was a major accident in high. Yeah. No one would reach. No, no, in fact, some people could reach. In fact, what happened when that information came into uh, the ministers here, and uh, he took his phone and tried to make call and was not able. And then he asked somebody else, can you please try your phone? It's not working. It's not working. And then uh, the, at that time, the minister was in CPA, and his driver said, boss, you need to make a call, you can use my phone. And how is it? He said, I'm from the other that was a big uh, problem. <laughs> yeah. So Antenna was still working, but it was not picking up. So what happens if your website, which is the company's storefront, is down? Or there's a loss, customers lose access to service on your web, on your site. How long can you afford to stay down? For your website to be down, there's a lot of things that can happen. It can be, for example, your IP address has to be blacklisted. Okay, so I let this to the IT expert who can explain to you about what he, what his uh, IP address is listed. And uh, oh, your website itself has, has been hacked. Or oh, the internet provider for your website is down. Okay, I know companies in Mauritius that got their website hosted in, uh, in one data center where they had connectivity from Intel and not Mauritius Telecom at the same time. And uh, not only from those two suppliers, and they have made sure that one of them had connectivity on safe cable and the other one was on bio. So to make sure of redundancy. And this is how you make yourself resilient. Okay, so companies who are using internet to, for connectivity, they must make sure that they've got redundancy in everything that you do. Okay? You have two minutes. Ah, okay, so if I have two minutes, let me just skip disease. Yeah. We talk about failures, hackers, okay, employees who uh, somebody that you, you you fire, and before that person goes out, he goes into your data room and catch all your cables. This is something that happens in Mauritius. It's always uh, 80% people are always in Yes. Yeah. Demonstration. Uh, this is another one, uh, construction workers, uh, accidentally they cut uh, fiber connectivity. Okay, uh, you, you've got earthquake. Good for you to know, Mauritius, we, uh, we are safe from earthquake. So I was, uh, I was working for a company where I was doing uh, global incident management, non-IT incident, and uh, we were having a lot of, of, of software that was helping us for all the scanning and looking into incidents that may occur. And in Mauritius, we are in a very safe zone concerning the uh, earthquake. This is good to know. No, tsunami. But tsunami is, uh, I mean, earthquake is there when it's a fake. Yeah. Tsunami is the same, but you can have the quarry. Yes. Yeah. But our building are not going to shake it. But not from the land. Yeah, not from the land. Okay, and uh, so talking about that company, good for you to know. Uh, we had one of our supplier which, supplier, which was a data miner, which is a, a software for global incident management. And uh, they were able to give us information about uh, uh, incidents that, that, uh, that just occurred or that, uh, I would say, that might occur. Or we could have it uh, very fast information. And how it worked was very easy. So they, uh, when, when you sign in on, on Facebook, Twitter, and all this, you don't read all those small letters. You just click yes. And what they do is they are going to uh, look into all your messages. And this is something which is actual. 
They're looking to your message. So you have 10 people in the end saying about flooding. So immediately, what they do is they plant an intelligence at the back. So my friend can give me thinking about uh, artificial intelligence as well. Maybe, uh, I don't know if it's that part of what you're going to say. And they're going to look into all information about uh, what can happen in that area. Is it true that this is happening? And they pop up the information and say, okay, this happened over there. And how they get it? From your mobile phone. And this is something which is real and actual. But it's really like on the end? Yep. Yep. Just try. Uh, unfortunately, you won't have access on the time either. So we tried. We, we, we had uh, like 50 persons in Germany uh, who were sitting in uh, Munich. We asked them to post some message on Twitter at the same time. 50 persons uh, talk about road, roadblocks. And immediately on our screen, we had uh, that pop up. Uh, X road in uh, Munich or Oslo. Yeah. Okay, we can skip all these. Yeah, what PCM involves is an investment in time, technology, tools, personal and training. It's an ongoing, an ongoing process which requires regular evaluation, revision, and practice. Practice that means exercising. And um, so this is what we talk now you know, in, a, in a bigger picture. We talk about resilience, where it's not only about uh, uh, your business just keep on, uh, on working. Now they put a more uh, aspect to it. You've got your operation, which comes together to it. You've got information security. You've got legal, you've got operation health and safety. All these now are being blended together to become what we talk now about uh, enterprises, yes, or operational resilience. Okay, so. Uh, yeah, all these. All these has come together now. And, uh, yeah. So this is what happens. This is information that I picked up from uh, the BCI uh, report, the report that we are scanning the report. Uh, for the year 2021 to 2022, they had like 35.8% of this version of Google for non occupational disease like COVID. Okay? IT and telecom are just more than 26 So by IT7, extreme was at 6.3. You see that uh, you have also travel restrictions, which is something that did not uh, occur before. Now it's 5.5%. Cyber attack was only 4.7%. There's a lot of uh, emphasis given, given on cyber attack, but this was only 4.7% of cyber attack which occurred for the 2021 to 2022. Okay? But when we look about what the, uh, the, the mid-term and long-term risk, Cyber security is number one with 85% percentage of, uh, uh, I would say, like uh, might happen. Second would be climate change, and uh, pandemic is still at 50%. Technology and telecom failures, that's only 35%. Okay, so I wish stop here as my friends are going to knock me out, yes? <laughs> so, I'm just out. Uh, that's my phone number. You can give me a call if you want to have more information, and I can, uh, I can share more information. Okay, thank you.